How many times a week, a day can you do that? I could eat it every day. <laughs> so, that answers every his day. question. There's nothing wrong with what he's talking about. If that's your risk appetite and that's how you measure it, that's you. That's how it's, it's okay. If you want to explore the other asset groups, like, if you know you're not going to sit down and have sweets and candy every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? No one in their right well, mind is going to do that. Well, first of all, my daughter is not going to understand uh, the benefits of real estate. Uh, neither will she want to put her attention on it. But let's say she makes a thousand dollars from her birthday party. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend her to do with it? <laughs> Okay, here we are, episode number three, with Eric Sykes today. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you. It's it's amazing. I'm here in Delray Beach, Florida, on the Avenue, Second Ave. Actually. Yes, absolutely. Barbara, up. Thank you for coming. Um, so today, uh, the topic is going to be financial education for teenagers and young adults, professional adults. And uh, I love this topic because uh, I'm a father of three and um, I always try to teach my kids directly or indirectly on financial education. I believe education comes from the house and uh, kids follow what the parents do. So today we have a financial advisor here that could help parents and their children on better education for their money. So let's listen to what Eric has to say today. <clears throat> amazing, Dennis. Absolutely amazing. Um, I get a, uh, a two for one today. I get a, an amazing haircut. We get to talk about financial education. Yes. Um, and financial education, financial literacy. Uh, you think of it like uh, like water or like a, a, a food. You know, the the more education you have. The, the stronger you get. You can make you know, financial decisions um, that are good for you. So uh, Sykes Financial Services is a registered investment advisory firm uh, licensed here in the state of Florida. And um, what, uh, you know, how the program came about, you know, for teenagers, you know, like Dennis, I am also uh, a parent, I'm a husband, I'm the CEO of Sykes Financial Services, and I'm also the founder of Financialize It for Young Professionals and uh, Teenagers. Uh, and there's some subject matter, you know, with, you know, what Dennis was saying, like having teenagers and the program is, is for the parents having conversations with their teenagers. So the state of Florida has a curriculum that's offered in the high schools, um, that the high schools do follow. So there is a, a bunch of education, entrepreneurial education uh, that is available for the teenagers, but it's just the teacher and the teenager, where our program is all about the parent working with the teenager. Um, so Dennis, you, you mentioned you have teenagers. What? Yes, I have a 13 year old and two eight year olds. Amazing. So just to give you a little background story about me, I was the guy, I was the kid when I was a teenager shoveling snow for my neighbors, uh, doing clean outs for their homes, washing cars to make money. And I, maybe I took that from my parents, I don't know, but that's what I, that's what I did at that time. And then I took the money and I saved it. Maybe I learned that from my mom, I don't know, I'm sure I did. Mom, thank you. But anyway, uh, that's how I came up. And, uh, and I was a small business owner at a very young age. Now, nobody really advised me like day to day, but that's just how it happened. So if you were to teach me at that time, what would you tell me on how to save my money better? So um, let's look at the, the, the 
the problem is how do you know what to invest in, right? So either you're a really good saver or you're a risk taker. So why don't we talk about um, three different categories, three different topics. Like one is uh, risk and return. Because I think if you know about risk and return, then you can make calculated decisions and different types of moves. The second is uh, various investment vehicles. So where do you put your money, right? How do you spread it out? And how you spread it out is, you know, let's, you know, let's touch on diversification. All right, can I just jump in real quick? Yeah. This is how I spread it out. Yeah. Let's... Real estate, real estate, real estate. <laughs> and I never lost in real estate. That's right. I never lost. No. If I tried right. in the stock market, I lost. If right. I tried in cryptocurrencies, I lost. Right. But real estate was true, steady. It was long and it was a long road. But at the end of the day, I won. Okay, good. Let's think so of that, real that's... estate as a food group, right? Because real estate is an asset class, which is diversified, right? So let's do real estate as like a meat or a protein. Because real estate's solid. It really is. It's a solid investment. It's part of the asset class. It's part of diversification. So right now you, you have 100% in... Uh, protein and meats. But the other asset classes, let's take, you know, stocks and bonds. Let's refer, let's use those as vegetables, right? Uh, and then what's another asset class? We could do precious metals. Okay, so that would fall under alternative investments, right? Precious metals are yes. crypto, you know, alternative investments. Gold, gold and silver. Right, alternative, what's called alternative investments, right? I, li I like commodities. Right, I like so oil. let's. So if we're going to associate that with a food group, let's refer to that as candy and sweets. There we go. Right? Because, and I'll show you how the, all the food groups come together to create diversification. And you can decide how you want to spread out your money. Wait, and, and so you understand it's like, oh, win, it's not win or losing. You know, you win at all of them because you're, you're spreading it out. And you know that you have other stability in other areas. Can right? I make one other point? Yeah. I don't like um, 401ks and any type of investment vehicles, which locks my money up. Right. And then penalizes me if I take it out. Right. I don't like them. That's no. my personal opinion. Maybe you could change it. Yeah. But I'm not into it. The hair, the hair is looking pretty good. Cool. Thank you. It looks Coming good. along. It looks sharp. Um, so the other category we have in the, so we, the, the asset classes we have right now are real estate, stocks and bonds, which is the second one. The third one is cash and marketable securities, right? Yes. Because we always have checking and savings. And that food group, let's have a food group, but let's refer to that as like water and juice. Could we also refer to these as buckets? Yeah. Like uh, one bucket could... But when you say cash, could be like a Well, that's bucket. a generic way of saying right. asset class. So right. let's keep it, you know, very, you know, uh, okay. more financial advisory. Sure. And yes. they're, what they're called is asset classes. So if I you search you. asset class, you're going to see real estate, stocks, bonds, um, cash, marketable securities, which we're referring to as water. Yes. And then the, the fourth one uh, would be business owner. Okay. So you can have like a LLC or incorporated or be a partner in a business that either runs itself or, you know, you, you, you're doing job, drop shipping or right. you're doing a profession that you've built skills to um, as a business owner. And let's refer to that uh, uh, food group as... Um, uh, pasta and carbohydrates. Okay. Okay. And then the last uh, one we have, which is one you said, is market is alternative investments. So cryptos. Yeah. Precious metals. Yeah. So we'll leave those at the end because those typically are the least or most risky. Those are the most risky. Right. Okay. Right. 
crypto with it. Yeah. So if you spread those out between the five different asset classes, which are the food groups, are meat and protein. And I'll, you'll see my point here. This is a process. So we figured out the problem is you can't have all your eggs in one basket. The solution is to spread them out. The third is the process to go through, which is the uh, different asset class, you know, category food groups. So one of them is meat and poultry, and that's real estate, which. Dennis, you love that, right? Yeah. Okay. Love it. The other one is stocks and bonds, which is vegetables. We have cash and, and marketable securities, which is water. We have um, business owner as pasta and carbohydrates. And then last, we have alternative investments, which are sweets and candy. So if you're going to sit down to a, a meal, you know, are you just going to eat real estate, which is, you know, meat? You're just going to have a big steak? Yes. I mean, how many days a week can you do that? How many times a week, a day can you do that? I could eat it every day. <laughs> so, that answers every his day. question. There's nothing wrong with what he's talking about. If that's your risk appetite and that's how you measure it, that's you. That's how it's, it's okay. If you want to explore the other asset groups, like... If you know you're not going to sit down and have sweets and candy every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? No one in their right well, mind is going to do that. Well, first of all, my daughter is not going to understand uh, the benefits of real estate. Uh, neither will she want to put her attention on it. But let's say she makes a thousand dollars from her birthday party. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend her to do with it? Right. So she's going to have to put in one of the, the buckets of investments to be diversified. And if you have a thousand dollars, you know, if you're splitting it between five different buckets, then that's how you split it. So it would be two hundred dollars each one, right? Okay. So she might buy for real estate. Obviously, she can't buy a piece of real estate for two hundred bucks. No. But she could buy a real estate investment trust. Mm -hmm. She could save up her money, you know, to get billed for a down payment, which is not can, considered. Can she invest in my fund? Um. That's a whole separate conversation, yeah. Dennis. I don't know if your fund is, is regulated or not. Right. So that I can't I can't speculate on that. But what I you know, she could buy twenty percent of alternative investments and she could buy twenty percent of stocks and bonds. She can keep two hundred dollars in cash. All right, I wanna set some aside for college. What do you recommend? Yeah. But so, I wanna be in control. Right. I don't wanna lock it up and then wait. I wanna be able to <laughs> spread it out. The way I would like. What do you recommend for that? Right. Um, so that's another conversation, but um, I will comment on that because, you know, I feel that, you know, a hammer is used to hammer a nail. A screwdriver is used to screw a screw into right. an item. You don't want to take a hammer and use it as a screwdriver. You don't want to use a screwdriver and use it as a hammer. I got you. So you use the tools that are available to you and the tools for college planning are available to you. And you could, you know, reach out to me and I can show you, you know, where to go to set it up is that every state has a college plan almost. Uh, and then they also have a ours here in the Florida is backed by the lottery and other financial vehicles. And then you have a 529 plan um, and 529 plans. BlackRock has one. Vanguard has one. There's one available through the state of Florida. There's more than enough investment vehicles. You know, as a fiduciary, you know, we don't get compensated on, on, on what products we recommend, right? So it's, it has to be the best interest for the, the parent and it has to be the best interest for the student. So does that answer your question? What's the difference between fiduciary and non-fiduciary? So, um, well, the easiest, the, the, the main one that the regulators use is fee-based or commission. So we don't receive a commission. Um, it's, everything is fee-based. You know, we charge $50 a month for our one-on-one -on -one advisory services. And then we charge a management fee for the investments. And it's, you know, it's, it's month to month. Mm -hmm. Whereas a non-fiduciary, they sell a product and then that's, that's done. They're on to the next one. So do they, if if do they really have their best interest at heart? 
if it's just one and done. Um, like, you know, I can give you some examples, but that's, So you're referencing like a non-fiduciary? Yeah, non-fiduciary, mm -hmm. right. It's one and done. It's one and done. Commission, <laughs> that's it. There's nothing wrong with that either because there's many products out there that are, are like that. So like a fiduciary would be like a, like a coach where you always be there to answer any questions, allocate the portfolio if needed. If there is any uh, problems in the market, you would call the client, give recommendations. Yeah. Would that be about right? Yeah, and you know that the recommendation is non-biased. So it's having your best interest at heart. Okay. And yes, we, <clears throat> we meet with uh, um, our clients and customers and, you know, on a regular basis because it's not just about investing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about putting your money in all the different buckets. Right. And, you know, sometimes no decision is the right decision. Now, do you recommend mutual funds or is that a case by case scenario? Well, you got mutual funds, you have exchange traded funds, um, you have ETFs. ETFs. Um, you know, some are more liquid than others and you have uh, individual stocks. Um, it's just, you know, based on the, what your risk appetite is and, and spreading the money around. Okay. So I have a brokerage account. Should right. I, should I, um, I, do I have to open, should I open another account for my kids and just put money in there? Yeah. Um, I think you should open it with, with Sykes Financial Services. We're, uh, uh, do you link up with brokerages? Yeah, we do. So, we do. We clear through interactive brokers, which is our clearing firm. Okay. So you could trade my portfolio inside my brokerage well, through? Yeah, yes. Through your uh, with your, with your approval. Right. Um, we don't have discretionary accounts. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the good thing with us is that we teach you when. No, to, it's good because yeah. I could access my portfolio at any time, look at it, see it. Right. And then you can come in and we can have a Zoom call and look at that's it. That's how I do it. Right. Yep. And then we could see where, where things could be moved around. What could we do? Correct. Yeah. And you still have, you know, control over it. So what do you recommend for college saving? Uh, I think we, we, I asked that earlier. Yeah. Right. Um, so just to make it really simple, I got three kids Yeah. and I want to save for their college. That's like priority number one. Yeah. Open, uh, open an account under my Ameritrade account, fund it. And then what do you recommend? How do you recommend allocating it? Right. So when we're dealing with college planning and you can actually put it in the market, uh, in my opinion, and what the, the funds that are available, it's not just my opinion, it's what you're able to invest in is um, either target portfolios. So it tells you when they're going to be, you know, using the money or you can purchase into an, an index. Um, I'm a firm believer that index based investing and doing cost averaging into the market right. uh, over a long time. So you're going to have to figure out how much you can put in each month, you know, like a yeah. thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. So if you split a thousand bucks, I'm using round numbers, yep. you know, $333 and 33 or 34 cents to each one of those each month, mm -hmm. it will automatically put it into the market. Nice. And you can set it and forget it. Yes. I like that part. Right. And I know you that... You just automatically deduct it from your account, from your bank, right, into the, right yes. into the brokerage. Right. And if you want specifics on the, the handful that are available to us, um, please you know, go to our website at financialize.com or Sykes Financial Services. You can go to our uh, LinkedIn page or um, Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Uh, you can read the description below and I can send you some information. We also have a, um, you know, a pre-recorded class on this. Um, nice. Yeah. And you can do it yourself. Awesome. That's, that's the beauty of it. Okay. <laughs> so let's say you're a small business owner like myself and uh, let's just say you're not into real estate. 
we don't have retirement plans set up like a W-2 would right. earner. What do you recommend for somebody's situation like that? Well, first thing we do is we analyze the cash flow of the business. Okay. You see, you know, you know, their debt to you know, income, what's coming in and out. Right. So make sure that the percentages line up. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I do like a little CFO fractional. You know, that's one of the things to make sure that money is allocated properly. And if there's funds available, then mm -hmm. You can make moves. Right. You can open up. Uh, 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 you can put a small amount into a investment plan. Uh, you know, five, six hundred, a thousand bucks a month. And w the peace of mind of diversification is once you do that little piece. You know, people get caught up in oh, I got to invest ten thousand, twenty thousand, fifty thousand. Right. No, you just it do a small, small piece. Yeah, 500 bucks. There's no up. minimum. No minimum. You can start with $100. Correct. And that's okay. Just get the process rolling. That's the point. Yeah. And another thing I wanted to mention was, which is so important, I think, for teenagers, is time. Yeah. It's time. Because if you could take that time and maximize it and compound the interest over the years, by the time they're 18, you could have something in the account that's right. pretty substantial because you use time. So the longer you wait could kind of take away from the earnings. Correct. Um, there's, it's a journey that they're, they're going through. So as a teenager to a young adult, um, the program at Financialize it that everyone is on the same track is to $2 million in 20 years. Wow. So we have our end goal, we have our financial education, we <coughs> do the heavy lifting for you. And then every 90 days, we give you the financial plan, which is proprietary to us, is $2 million in 20 years. Wow, that's great. So, I mean, the ideal situation would be if families could afford this to not even have the kids touch it in college and just keep it, let it ride. Right. So I right. think our next haircut, we should talk about generating income because I have a program for um, different types of income and wages and productivity, which is also another um, state curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you know, we're not paid to do laundry. We're not paid to you know, you know, do chores unless you you know you're training your kid to be a you know, uh, you know, work in that that sector. So you know, why aren't we compensating our kids for for homework and schoolwork? It, it is work. It is, it is it their is, job. Exactly. You know, reading books, you know. And they uh, don't even have to know about it. You just do it. Right. You them. do an automatic, automatic deposit. So I have a dollar amount that are paid to the teenager and to the, to, the, to the child throughout their middle school and high school career. Then they take that money and they consider it as a wage. And you have an employer-employee relationship with the parent and the teenager. Nice. Yeah, and you could do that right away, um, how they get paid. It's awesome. Yeah. Like the great ideas, you dropped a lot of bombs today. <laughs> how do you like the haircut? I'm really, really happy. Awesome. Yeah. Great to hear. Wow. So I hope everyone uh, listened in and uh, take this advice and use it immediately. Just open that account, fund it, get it going, start it now. See you on the next episode on the Barbara Podcast. Thank you for watching. Amazing. Love you guys. Peace. Namaste.